Today, I'm going to give you five tips to crush online cash games. I've been playing and crushing the online cash games on Coin Poker recently, and I want to make sure that you crush the games too. So let's get right to it. Online, six-handed cash games, or five-handed or seven-handed, whatever, depending on the site, are a great way to build your bankroll. To beat these games, all you really have to do is play good, strong, fundamentally sound GTO strategies, and then to really maximize your win rate, you need to adjust to take advantage of the mistakes your opponents are making. In this video, you're gonna learn preflop strategies for online six-handed cash games. Also, how to lose less when you are in the big blind, which is a spot that costs a lot of people a lot of money. We'll also discuss how to play your marginal made hands, such as top pair no kicker or middle pair. Also, we're gonna be discussing how to bluff effectively so that you actually do maximize your fold equity or lose less whenever you happen to run bluffs and a whole lot of other stuff. So let's get right to it. Tip number one is to play tight, aggressive preflop strategies. So many poker players think they're supposed to be loose and splashy and aggressive in six-handed games or even four-handed games, but realize you just need to play good, strong, fundamentally sound poker. And in games where there is a rake taken out of each pot, which is the case in basically every online poker site, you got to play kind of tight because imagine you are playing one to no limit, right? Say you raise, let's say $5 and the big blind calls. The pot should be your five, the big blind's five, and the $1 from the small blind, so $11. But the casino, the online site, may take 50 cents out of the pot or 75 cents out of the pot. So to account for that money, just being taken out of the pot, you need to make sure that you're playing tight, aggressive strategies. So let's take a look at these three charts. First, here we have the low jack raise first in. This would be first to act if you were six-handed. If you're playing on coin poker seven-handed games, this would be second to act. As you see, the hands in red are raising, the hands in blue are folding. You really don't get to mess around. Notice queen nine suited, jack nine suited, nine eight suited, eight seven suited, fours, threes, twos, ace nine offsuit, queen ten offsuit, jack ten offsuit, all folding. They're just not that good of hands. You may be surprised to see the King X suited, like King eight suited, seven suited, six and five suited raising most of the time. Perfectly fine and good. Turns out these are very, very good hands to raise with. Now, if you're playing on a site with an ante, like Coin Poker does have an ante, you can raise a little bit wider than this. Don't get carried away. Essentially take these hands that are using mixed frequencies like King seven suited and raise them every time. You could also raise a little bit wider if you think your opponents are not going to three bet you often enough, such as with queen nine suited, jack nine suited, nine eight suited, eight seven suited, all the sixes, fives, maybe pocket fours. But again, don't get too carried away from early position because you have to worry about all the other players waking up with a decently strong hand yet to act. Now, most people look at reasonable GTO preflop raising ranges, do that, and they're fine. That's not that difficult to do. We have tons of GTO preflop charts at pokercoaching.com, both on your poker coaching app on your phone and on the website. So make sure you reference those, please. Where a lot of people go wrong, though, is they play way too loosely when someone raises before them. Let's take a look at this chart in the middle. Here we have the cutoff versus a low jack raise. So if the low jack raises with this range, the, you know, reasonable range here, here's what the cutoff should do. Notice they have no hands in green. Green hands would call. They simply do not call before the flop in this situation. If there's an ante in play, as there is on coin poker, you may want to sneak in a calling range, but I really just wouldn't recommend it. Instead, three bet every hand you're going to play. The problem with calling is it lets the big blind call as well, getting very good odds. And that sort of forces you to just make a hand post flop when there are three people or more in the pot going to the flop. And also when you call, you ensure you pay the rake. Whereas if you three bet and everybody folds, you just win the pot. And on a lot of online sites, you don't actually pay rake in that instance. They just give you the whole preflop pot, which is amazing. So here is the GTO three betting range. As you see, it is very tight. Something like pocket eights and better, ace 10 suited and better, king 10 suited and better, ace queen off suited and better, ace five suited, ace four suited, maybe a few suited connectors. That's about it. Now, if you think the low jack is raising wider than this range, or you think they'll fold a little bit too often to a three bet, then you can three bet a little bit wider, right? Always consider what your opponents do incorrectly and then adjust to take advantage of whatever they are doing wrong. 
Let's take a look at the button versus the cutoff. Now you do get to have some calls. The hands in green are calling. And if you take a look at the hands that are calling, they're all the hands that really want to see the flop. These are hands that do not want to three bet and then fold to a four bet, such as jacks, tens, nines, eights, seven, sixes, fives. These hands want to see the flop and go from there. Also notice a lot of suited Broadway hands and suited aces are calling and seeing the flop. Notice what is not calling and seeing the flop. There are hands like 10-7 suited, jack-10 offsuit, ace-8 offsuit, 7-6 offsuit, etc. Let's take a look at the hands that are three betting. Well, you're three betting your best hands, queens and better, ace-king and ace-queen suited. And then, essentially a bunch of hands that are on the cusp of playability, like marginal suited connectors, some suited aces, some suited kings, and a few Broadway hands like ace-jack offsuit, ace-10 offsuit, and king-queen offsuit. Notice king-jack and queen-jack offsuit are not quite good enough to play. Again, if there's an ante in play on your site, you can play a little bit looser. If the cutoff, I'm sorry, if the, uh, yeah, if the cutoff is raising a little bit too wide, you can play a little bit looser. And if they are folding to three bets a little bit too often, you should be three betting more, okay? Do not just straight follow the GTO charts. Always consider what your opponent's doing correctly and adjust logically. Tip number two. Similarly, before the flop, stop defending your big blind so wide. So many players in these cash games defend almost any two cards from the big blind. But let's take a look at how tight you should actually be. Here we have the big blind versus a low jack raise. In this scenario, notice you should only three bet the absolute best hands plus a smattering of ace x suited, king x suited, and suited connectors. Your calling range, though, should be pretty strong. Why should it be so strong? Well, you're out of position and you're against this strong low jack range. If you're against a strong range from out of position, even getting okay odds, you just don't get to defend all that often. And that's especially true as you get deeper and deeper and deeper stacked. Quite often in these games online, you start with 100 big blinds, but after an hour or two of play, you may have 200 or 300 big blinds, right? And from out of position, you really, really, really do not want to play hands that can make mostly marginal hands after the flop. And that's going to be pretty much everything that's offsuit. Notice ace-10, king-jack, queen-jack, jack-10, all these hands are folding if they're offsuit. Also notice that while you are playing a lot of suited hands, you're not playing every suited hand. Now, if you are playing on coin poker, where there is an ante in play, and you're facing a minimum raise, as opposed to something like a three big blind raise, you do need to start playing a whole lot more suited hands and a few more of the offsuit hands. Not like jack-7 offsuit, but like, you know, queen-jack, king-jack, ace-10, jack-10, stuff like that. Offsuit. As you're getting better and better odds, and as you're closing the action in a heads-up pot, you can defend a little bit wider. But again, don't get carried away defending all the junky suited hands, like 9-3 suited. That should be folded against a low jack raise. Let's take a look at the big blind versus a button raise first hand. Now your three betting strategy is going to be a little bit different. You're going to three bet all the best hands, tens and better, ace, queen and better, some suited connected hands, and then a lot of medium-ish strength hands that flop kind of well. This is something a lot of people do not do correctly. They three bet all the best hands, and a few weakish suited connectors, but they forget about hands like jack-10, jack-9, 10-9, jack-8, 9-8, 10-7 suited, etc. All these are suited. Again, notice though, you don't get to defend with all the weakest suited hands, unless of course your opponent raises really small, and there's an ante in play. And you also don't get to defend a whole lot of offsuit stuff, like notice king-8, queen-8, 10-8, 7-6 offsuits are all just getting out of the way. Even ace-6, ace-4, etc. that are offsuit are just getting out of the way. You have to play a tight, aggressive preflop strategy in six-handed online cash games. I know that some of your opponents are going to be playing a whole lot more pots than you are, but that's okay. The easiest way to crush players who play ranges that are too wide is to simply play good, strong, tight, aggressive ranges. Let's take a quiz. Here's a scenario. We're playing about 100 big blinds deep in this hand. Button raises to 15 bucks. We're playing 2-5. We have 9-8 suited in the small blind. What would you do? Take a second, think about it. Write it in the comment section below while you're down there. Click the like button if you're enjoying this video. Click the subscribe button. I would appreciate it. Notice there is a bit of an ante in play. It's not a humongous ante. This is a relatively small ante. Let's take a look at the GTO preflop charts on pokercoaching.com. Here we are, 100 big blinds deep in the small blind versus a raise. We're on the button. I'm sorry, versus a raise from the button. We're in the small blind. Notice 9-8 suited just folds. <clears throat> this may come as a surprise to a lot of people, but it's just not quite good enough from out of position. If you did want to play this hand, I would recommend 3-betting it. If you want to extrapolate a little bit on this chart, 
Notice 10-9 uh, suited, 10-8 suited, 7-6 suited, 6-5 suited are three betting when you play them. If you wanted to play the 9-8 suited, you should probably three bet it too. Okay, let's take another quiz. <clears throat> Here we have queen nine suited on the button. Facing a 2.5 big blind raise, 200 big blinds deep now. What would you do here? Take a second, think about it. Let me know in the comment section down below. Go down there, get involved. We do interactive learning at pokercoaching.com. This is not sit back, have your favorite cocktail and watch me talk channel. This is get in there and learn a little bit. In this spot, really you can go either way between calling, three betting, or folding. Let's take a look at the GTO chart here. Notice queen nine suited is mixing between folds and calls, right? However, there is an ante in play, which should make you expand your range a little bit. So you can see king nine suited three betting with no ante in play a large chunk of the time. Same thing for jack nine suited. And queen nine suited is already mixing. So 200 big blinds deep. In this scenario, I would probably call or three bets. But if you tell me this player who raises is a good, strong player, just fold. Your money is not going to come from playing a little bit too loosely and aggressively or splashily against good players. If you tell me the initial raiser is perhaps not such a good player, well then definitely play it. If you told me the player in the big blind is really bad, again, I don't know who these players are, but if you told me the player in the big blind is really bad, you should definitely call. Because then you want the player in the big blind in the pot because they're going to make all sorts of mistakes, right? If the player in the big blind is really good and the initial raiser is you know, normal or perhaps bad, you definitely want a three bet because you want the player in the big blind out, right? So it's not just who the initial raiser is, but also who is very likely to be involved in the pot if you do call, right? So if the big blind is good, be more inclined to three bet. If the big blind is bad, be more inclined to call. If the initial raiser is good, be more inclined to fold. If the initial raiser is bad, be more inclined to play. All right. Tip number three is to play your marginal hands passively. The number one mistakes that many small stakes players make is they overplay marginal made hands. And this leads them to getting stacked for no reason and staying in pots just way too long because their hand's okay. When you have a marginal made hand, you need to play passively. So you're going to want to pot control and induce bluffs. You got to get over your fear of being outdrawn. Recognize that is simply part of poker. Focus on how to play each and every spot in the most profitable manner and forget all the rest of the nonsense. While it may feel a little bit weird to not continuation bet every single time, you're not supposed to continuation bet every single time, by the way, you need to have a checking range. You need to protect your checking range by checking with some marginal stuff, some weak stuff, and even a few traps. Let's take a look at a common spot. Here we have a seven off suit. We raise it up. Big blind calls, flop comes, ace, king, eight, opponent checks. Right off the bat, if you told me you wanted to check this hand, I don't hate it. We have a good hand, but not a great hand, right? If we get check raised in this spot, it's certainly pretty nasty. That said, this is a flop you're not going to get check raised too often on, so I'm okay betting. We do go for a $2 bet, two big blind bet, whatever it is. Yeah, $2 bet at 50 cent dollar. Opponent calls. Turns to native diamonds. Opponent checks. Now at this point, while we have the best hand a large amount of the time because we beat any king, we chop with any ace, we beat any sort of gut shot or backdoor, backdoor draw like jack 10, if we bet and get called, it's okay but not great. If we bet and get raised, it's a disaster. And if we check, as I'm going to do here, if the opponent bets on the river, we have just a pretty easy call. You may say, why call? We only chop with an ace. Yeah, but what do we really lose to? We only lose to an eight. It's kind of hard to have an eight because there's two of them on the board, right? Also, your opponent's not going to have ace-king to beat us very often with an ace. So this is just an easy call. We're going to be against an ace a lot of the time in this spot, but every once in a while we're going to be shown a bluff, like the gut shots. I called in this scenario, and we beat the queen-10 offsuit. By the way, I have been playing a lot of cash games between... 25 cent, 50 cent, and $2, $5 on coin poker recently, you can play with me on a regular basis. My name there is Jonathan Little. It's not a secret. Also, we have a $2,000 free roll every single week for my community. 
Information is down there. Check out pokercoaching.com slash free roll to get in the game. I've been streaming it here on YouTube. You can probably go back and find past videos. Tip number four is to put pressure on your opponents when you are bluffing. Too many people get lazy when they bluff. And they end up putting out a medium bet. They bet half pot, hoping their opponents fold. Recognize we're not playing half pot, only hold them. We're playing no limit Texas style. If you want to steal more pots that don't belong to you, you need to always think about the most common bluff catcher your opponent likely has, and then put pressure on that type of hand. So, this often means you're going to want to use small bluffs when your opponent's range is mostly weak hands, like middle pair or bottom pair. But when your opponent's range is mostly hands like top pair, that very often means you're going to want to bet huge if you are trying to make those hands fold. You always want to consider your opponent's range. We discussed this thoroughly in the Cash Game Masterclass at PokerCoaching.com. We actually have a bluffing decision flowchart. And if you go through that flowchart every single time, you'll find that more often than not, you will choose the right size to bluff and you'll be able to determine if you should bluff to begin with or not. Let's take a look. Here we have Jack seven suited on the button. We raise it up to 12 bucks. Big blind calls. 10, four, three. Opponent checks. This is a great spot to bet. If they fold, we win with Jack high. If they call, we have lots of outs. If they raise, we're not folding. We bet. 16. Opponent calls. Turn is the six of hearts. Pots 58 bucks. Playing $624 deep. Opponent checks. This is a great spot to bet again with a gut shot and just jack high and a flush draw. We go 45 bucks. Opponent calls. Rivers of nine of spades. Opponent checks. Now, as a general rule, when the flush draw misses, you don't really want to have a flush draw on your hand because it makes it less likely your opponent has a flush draw, which makes it more likely they have some sort of made hand. Okay. That said, they could still have a busted flush draw here with ace, king, or queen high. Also, they could have a whole lot of medium strength hands like 6-5 or 5-4 or ace-3, something like that. And if we bet enough, those hands will feel very inclined to fold. So in this scenario, if you consider your opponent's likely range, it's going to be a 10, which is not going to fold to any bet for the most part, unless they're kind of nitty. Or it's going to be a really marginal hand, like a 6, a 5, I'm sorry, a 6, a 4, or a 3. Or maybe some pocket pair that's under a 10. So to get those medium strength hands to fold, I think we need to go rather big in this scenario. You may say, should we go small in this spot? I don't think so because a lot of draws missed. When a lot of draws missed, like the flush draws and various overcards like Queen Jack, this is a spot where I think we do want to use a relatively big size because most players can be kind of call happy in general with any pair if you do bet not big. So the pot's $148. We have $579 behind. I would go for an overbet in this spot, something like $200, bucks, 225 bucks. That's going to apply a lot of pressure and get your opponent to fold out a lot of those medium strength hands. Now, if you tell me that you know your opponent really hates to fold, they don't fold anything, they'll call with any pair for any amount, well, then don't bluff and then just value bet thinly with any 10 or better, maybe any 9 or better, right? But assuming the opponents are playing well, and look, people play reasonably enough in pretty much any online cash game. They're not, the opponent's not just totally blundering around and going to call an all-in with the ace-jack offsuit or something, right? This is a spot where I think a chunky bet is very nice. We do go 200, opponent... Let's just have it this time. Tip number five is to go for thin value and then overfold when they raise you. A lot of small stakes players are scared to go for value because they think, what happens if I bet my opponent raises? Well, the answer is you fold. If you value bet thinly and your opponent raises, you fold. Fortunately for you, though, most small stakes players do not bluff anywhere near often enough. And that is especially true on the river. So if you know you're not going to get bluff raised often enough, what should that make you do to your strategy? How should you adjust? Well, the answer is you should go for thin value and then fold when they raise you. This will print money. Let's take a look at another hand. We raise it up at one, two with pocket jacks, big blind calls, king, 10, three, opponent checks. We can go either way between bet or check. We do a small $3 into the $11 pot. Opponent calls, turns a seven, opponent checks. So at this point, our hand is 
pretty clearly a marginal made hand. We lose to any king. A 10 will probably call a bet again, but, eh, you know, it's a spot where we also open ourselves up to getting raised if we do bet, which is a bit of a disaster. So I think checking here is pretty nice. Check, check. River's a two. If the opponent bets on the river, what do you think you should do? Call. The answer is call. When you check back a medium strength hand, unless you know your opponent literally never bluffs and never value bets thinly, call. That said, the opponent checks this time. So when they check, what should that make you do? Can we bet this hand for value? Well, consider the opponent's play so far, right? A lot of players check raise their best kings on the flop. And if they did have a king and it went check check on the turn, a lot of players feel very inclined to bet a king on the river because they don't want to let it go check check and just win a tiny pot, right? So once the opponent does not check raise the flop and then checks the river, it's very likely they have a 10 or worse. Okay? So the question becomes, how much will a 10 or worse call? And I think a medium bet in this scenario is very nice. The pot's 17. I think something like $9 is pretty good. This time we go 13, maybe a little bit big. I don't mind it, to be fair. I mean, look, a 10 is always going to call, right? And a 10 is obviously way more likely than a 3. If you thought your opponent would uh, check call the flop with a lot of just like pocket pairs and random ace highs and then feel inclined to call a $7 bet on the river or a $9 bet on the river, maybe that's a little bit better. I think your opponent's going to fold out a lot of that stuff to any bet, which, you know, they probably should. Then I think the bigger bet is better because that extracts a little bit more money from the 10. Now, what a lot of people do wrong here is they bet pot on the river because they think they have the best hand, so they just want to blast it. The problem is as you go bigger and bigger and bigger, your opponent will naturally, assuming they're decent at poker, They'll fold out more and more of their bluff catchers. And as they fold more and more bluff catchers, it means they're mostly going to call you when they do happen to have the king, in which case you lose. So that's bad. So make sure you don't go too big in this spot, because as you go bigger and bigger and bigger, your opponent's going to fold out a lot of the hands that you really want to get called by. This time, we bet. Opponent called with 10-9. We win a nice pot. So that is it for today. Those are five tips to crush online cash games. Tip number one, to recap. Play tight, aggressive preflop strategies. You cannot play loosey-goosey, have a sandwich poker. Number two, stop defending your blind so wide. It kind of goes hand in hand with point one, right? Just because all your opponents are calling with all sorts of junk in the big blind does not mean that you should. There is an, a rake in basically every online six-handed cash game, so you have to account for it. And that forces you to play tightly from the big blind. Step number three, pot control the medium strength hands and induce bluffs whenever it goes Check, check on the turn with your medium strength hands and your opponent bets. Don't be afraid to find a call. Tip number four is to put real pressure on your opponents when you are bluffing, half potting it or third potting it. Maybe ideal, but quite often when a lot of draws miss, it's not going to get the job done. So you need to go big. Do not be afraid to actually play No Limit Texas Hold'em. And tip number five is to go for thin value and overfold to aggression. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed today's video again. Do me a quick favor before we leave. Click the like and subscribe button down below. Click the notification bell. And if you have a friend who is struggling at online six-handed cash games, share this video with them. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you next time.